Well, everybody, it looks like 3M is getting a lot of interest in the comment sections. So I'm gonna discuss 3M just a little bit here today. Um, now, 3M makes a lot of different products. <laughs> They're a manufacturer of uh, uh, those sticky post-it notes, the little yellow notes that uh, everybody knows and loves. Um, masks, which I think everybody became familiar with during the last few years for some reason or another. Can't really think of what it might have been. Um, they also had this little subsidiary make these uh, combat earplugs that are the subject of a class action lawsuit that I'm going to talk about in a minute. So 3M is a uh, very widely discussed uh, stock amongst dividend investors because it pays a pretty substantial dividend over 5% yield with close to 60% of its earnings going out in dividends to its shareholders. Um, now, as far as the share price, as you can see, it's been beaten up really badly in recent years. And a lot of this beat down is really to do with the uh, earplug lawsuit. Now, there's some interesting, I guess you could say, developments um, about this lawsuit. So 3M, uh, you know, obviously is incentivized to find whatever they can uh, to kind of fight against this class action suit that, that they're facing right now. But basically, the cliff notes of it are that they have a subsidiary that made some combat earplugs. The earplugs were supposed to block out harmful noise levels while at the same time letting like normal sound level um, noises like people's voices, etc. through so that um, troops in combat situations would be able to effectively communicate with each other while also at the same time being protected from the, the noise of uh gunfire and explosions and, and that kind of thing, which can be really detrimental to one's hearing in the long run. So uh, 3M put out this uh, release here that says that according to U.S. Department of Defense records for more than 175,000 plaintiffs, that's right, That's the class action suit has more than 175,000 plaintiffs, it shows that the vast majority of the claimants in the litigation have currently normal hearing under medically accepted standards. Now by that, what they mean by medically accepted is that that's according to the AMA, American Medical Association guidelines, all right? Almost 90% have no hearing impairment. And then under WHO and National Institutes of Health Standards, more than 85% have what would be categorized as normal hearing. Now, we can get, I mean, I'm sure that there, there's probably um, some caveats as to what constitutes impairment, what constitutes normal, but still, um, this would seem to be de a bit of a detriment to the case of the class action. Now, uh, da, 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 da nearly a quarter of the plaintiffs with impairment, so there are some that do have hearing impairment, but nearly a quarter of those reported the the the, um, the condition was basically documented by hearing tests that occurred before they ever used the earplugs. So basically they're saying, hey, yes, um, you know, around 10% had, you know, some kind of hearing impairment, but out of that 10%, a quarter of those have, you know, this previously documented, you know, hearing issues. Now, that doesn't take into account, like, hey, maybe they had pre-existing hearing, um, you know, issues that maybe got worse, right? Um, so, like, you know, take take it with, you know, take it with a grain of salt, because this is from 3M's perspective, so it's going to be as... Um, as harsh against the the plaintiffs as it possibly can be. Um, now, if anybody knows how these class action suits kind of work, 
like, you know, what they essentially do, and I, I've gotten these letters before, and, and a lot of you probably have too, where it says, hey, did you use X, Y, or Z product and service between the years of um, this year and this year? If so, you may be entitled to compensation. Just fill out this card with whatever and send it in. So by filling in that thing and sending it in, you you basically become um, potentially a plaintiff in one of these cases. And the uh, lawyers who set them up, I would I would think, are probably incentivized to cast as wide a net as possible, right? So the amount, I'm sure it's probably even more, way more than even the 175,000 probably used the earplugs. So they might have sent this out to, you know, 500,000, 700,000, even a million or more, you know, potentially service members that may have used these earplugs over the course of whatever years they were in use. And this is just how many probably that they got to actually kind of respond and say, yeah, I used them and yeah, I want compensation. Now, the the issue um, that 3M is having, even if all of this, the way they've painted it is exactly true, is that the perception of them even, you know, putting out that information is that they're calling 90% of veterans liars, okay? Now, there have been a number of bellwether cases, which are sort of like test cases or example cases, I, I, I suppose you could say, where they've had, where they've put different individuals that claim hearing loss under this, under um, with regards to these earplugs, have um, gone up against 3M, and in most cases, they've been awarded quite a lot of money. Okay. Now, the pro, the I think on the one hand, people are looking at some of these verdicts that are millions and millions of dollars, right, and. <laughs> they're thinking, oh man, you know, this person got awarded $3 million for hearing damage and there's 175,000 plaintiffs. Well, geez, if you do the math on that, that'll bankrupt 3M. Now, what will actually happen because of the size of the case is that it ends up getting kind of <coughs> more or less watered down because when you sign up, um, for the class action, essentially, the people who are going to end up, you know, kind of deciding whether or not to, um, it's going to be, it's not going to be like a straight thing where each of the 175,000 people gets their day in court and, you know, gets an individualized, like, payout or whatever. It's going to be negotiated kind of amongst a very, you know, hand-select few for everybody else. And, um, in most cases, like if you're part of a class action suit and um, you know it was for some product or service, you might have spent you know hundreds of dollars or whatever on the thing, and then after the class action suit's over, you get a check for like four bucks or something, right? So um, I think more than likely the case, if it if you know it goes the distance and 3M has to pay, it'll probably be something that they physically can pay, but it will probably be a lot, um, possibly enough to, you know, hurt the company to an extent, um, but not enough to really, to even really satisfy, like, in, in 3M's case on this, you know, they're saying, like, maybe 10%, you know, affected. The sad part is that there may be some in the case, you know, who end up getting a payout that weren't effective, uh, affected rather, and so it'll water down the payouts for the people who were really badly. Like, like let's say somebody, you know, suffered like ninety percent, you know, hearing loss on this thing or something like crazy like that, or it went totally deaf, and you know, that's permanent and there's no, you know, no repairing it. And, you know, they're in there with, you know, maybe there's some people who had maybe some small effect, but it was really minimal or, you know, some who had, you know, no real loss at all. 
in there also taking a piece. I, d I think that honestly, with how big this thing gets, it's unfair to the people who got maybe damaged the worst, right? Um, so honestly, like it's it comes back to the case where when think when litigation uh, takes place, really the only people that win are the lawyers. I think the um, the veterans who were impacted the worst are going to lose in terms of not getting you know maybe what they should. Uh, and then I think 3M shareholders are also <laughs> probably going to lose because um, the lawyers just want to inflate it up and make it as big as it could possibly get so that their cut is the sweetest. All right. So that's what I think about the class action suit with 3M. Um, it's up in the air. Don't know how it's going to go or what it's going to end up costing. But aside from, if you set that aside, it seems like a really you know solid, reasonable dividend pair, potentially at a discount if the lawsuit's not as bad as what people think it'll be. But it is a large, uncertain thing kind of hanging over their heads. So... Um, I'm definitely watching for developments to see how it's going. Um, let me know in the comments what you think of this th situation with 3M and the earplug lawsuit. And don't forget to subscribe. Join that old Discord. I'll be linking it below. Take it easy and peace.